Welcome back. Before moving to the next topic, it's a good time to see how to document our code. Uh, what I'm going to show you is not only useful to document our classes and methods, but it can be also used to describe functions in the same way. To describe what a certain piece of code does in Python, we use doc blocks by writing the text within triple quotes right under the class or method or function uh, definition. So let's get started and see how to define a document block. Uh, so let's first um, start by defining a class and we already know how to do that. And we use the pass keyword so we can implement the class later. Uh, so as I say, inside triple quotes, we write what uh, we want to write to describe what the code actually does. So uh, let's say uh, we open the triple quote like that. And in here, we can write string like define a person class. And then uh, after that, that's already a document, a doc block. Uh, so that's going to appear when we later on, we will use the help function to see what's inside the documentation of this class. Um, but let's uh, define some attributes for the class and the method. So we see, we will see how it works. So let's get rid of the pass keyword and let's define a name and we assign to the name variable a string which is Fabio with my name and profession and another string and let's define a method uh that we are going to call introduction in pro mm. uh, and then we pass the self keyword and then colon semicolon and then sorry colon and then another document block and then we say that this is going to return an introduction message like that uh, for a given person. We can be more or less descriptive, it's up to you. Uh, it's important to use document blocks, uh, doc blocks, because um, the future you, uh, when approach to the code that you wrote months ago, uh, won't probably remember what, what you were thinking at the time and if there is someone else working on your code is going to help him understand what the class or method does and then what kind of parameters or attributes he um, should pass uh, to the class for instance uh, so let's uh, actually implement this method Okay, and now inside this uh, the first um, doc block that we use to document uh, the entire class, uh, we can specify that, for instance, we have a string with the name, which is the name attribute, and we say And then we have another attribute here, which is the profession and it's on the string.
okay so let's um, let's see how it, this works and then we will print its documentation so let's uh, start by um, instantiating a class object so user person and that's the instance of the person class and then we say print user and then we have the intro method and already here you see introduction that's misspelled but anyway you see that in visual studio code i already have this uh, pop-up window that tells me what this uh, message ju just does so um, returns an introduction message for a given person returns an introduction message for a given person okay and then we can do that again for another person okay we didn't use the constructor for this example uh, so we have to uh, override the value that we passed here to these attributes so let's do that so user then we have the name and let's say Serena and then user to profession let's say writer and then he after that we use again the print function and then we print the user intro like that and then well we miss an equal sign okay so now when we print this code we, you will of course get this message but that's not what i want to show you uh, that's the help function that defined actually uh, helps us to um, gather more information about a certain function or a method or a class in this case so let's use it uh, on the person class like that and let's see when we run the code what we get okay so in the terminal you can see that we have this um, documentation that opens up and in here you see that there is what we wrote here at the top of the class so that's what our class does and that's what we should pass um, as a value for this attribute and that's for the second one and then underneath that we have where is the method the intro method uh, which returns this message and there is no nothing else in here to see and then we can quit if we scroll we have some uh, of the attribute that we used so the name attribute which is fabio which is the default um, value that we assign to this attribute in here and then the profession and that's it so you see that it says end you can quit this window by pressing Q and that's going to quit and show you the terminal again and as you see you got here the two messages that we uh, output here using the print function so the first where it is the first one and the second one here and then this help method uh, this help function that printed the documentation but let's see also another thing that we can do uh, to provide more details about our code is to is to define the type of attribute that we are going to use in the class instance 
So let's see how to declare attributes types. Okay, let's define another class. And in here, we can say uh, that we have for this class um we have a constructor first so let's define the constructor do we have a snippet for that it doesn't seem i have one doesn't matter okay in it we add well okay self and then we want to pass the um, discipline and the medals okay we don't need the super uh, the super function now and then we use the self discipline uh, well, equals to that and then we use self um, bodies medals which is equal to medals like that and then uh, when we uh, instantiate the class object if we don't pass the right uh, type of attribute value uh, we might in in face an error inside our program depending on how it's built and what's its scope so if this is, needs to be number but we pass a string we might um, face an error if we want to uh, add one um, medal on top of uh, a certain object when we instantiate it, this class so it's a good idea to define uh, their uh, um, type up here so we can say and then we use the uh, column and then str which is stands for string and then we have medals and then we say in it uh, int, int, okay. So this way, when we print the code, the um, uh, we use that function to print uh, the documentation for this class. You will see that in the final section, we will get these values information. So these types values information. So let's see that. Okay, let's print it. Let's get rid of this one, otherwise it will print the help for the person class first. And let's run the code and then you see we got the uh, what we wrote inside the first doc block. Where is it now? In here. So we can be more descriptive, uh, but just for that's just an example. Um, let's see, we define these two types here, so the medal is an integer and the discipline is a string, and let's see that on the bottom, when we scroll down, you see that data and other attributes defined here, uh, under this section, you got this annotation uh, which is a dictionary actually so it says the discipline attributes of the class is a class in string while the medals is a class integer so we know that and when we instantiate an object we sure enough don't pass uh, a, a list instead of a discipline so we don't pass a discipline list or we don't pass a um a string instead of an integer for the medals and so we are sure that uh, our class and our code works properly and it's documented 
well so when we in the future uh, look at our code we know what to do if someone else look at our code he knows uh, what to do so let's quit that and um, as you see from the output of the help command so we get the documentation and at the end there is the other section that shows you how the data of other attributes uh, of the class are defined in this case we know that the so the discipline is a string so must be a string uh, and the methods must be a class integer so an integer and this prevents so others um, by using our code um, pass the wrong data uh, type when instantiating the class object and makes uh, the code fail so to help uh, the help command in case you wonder is used to print the documentation of classes but also methods and functions uh, so that's it for the documentation um, and let's move forward to the actual uh, topic of this lesson which is inheritance so let's see how to define classes so this is the second part of the object oriented uh, programming in python so it's split into lessons uh, this is the second one so let's see how so a subclass okay uh, so now that we know um, how to document the code we can move to this um, topic of the second um, part of the object oriented programming uh, so class inheritance uh, so classes uh, as we said in the previous video are essentially a blueprint to build something over and over like plans to build bicycles or houses or factory products and using classes we can uh, define the building blocks while with subclasses we can extend them so we will refer to the main class as the parent class uh, during this video while the subclasses are often called child classes so um, a child class basically in a, inherits uh, from its parent class all the attributes and methods uh, and therefore uh, the parent class when we instantiate it uh, the child class when we instantiate it uh, can access to them so the child class can use these methods and attributes but also define new methods and attributes or override the parent's attributes and methods let's see a practical example to understand that and i am going to define a vehicle class and then i will create child classes for bicycle cars ferries and planes let's get started Okay, so we defined the vehicle class, which is the parent class. Now I'm going to define the other uh, child classes. So Okay, this is how you define a child class. So between parentheses, when we uh, define um, the class, so in the class definition, between parentheses, we uh, specify the name of the parent class that we want in, to inherit from. Uh, and then, as we did for the uh, parent class, we uh, use for now the pass keyword, but we um, can write the code of the, parent, of the child class in here as we do for the parent class. Let's define the other classes first and then we will implement the code so that's going to be a car that's going to be a ferry and then we go a plane okay 
Okay, so these four subclasses, of course, are, are, are all bagels. Uh, so uh, it's um, clear that they can uh, inherit so these all the methods if we have implemented them um, of the of the vehicle class. So as we say, this is a blueprint, this one, and these are uh, the um, childs that can um, access the parents' attributes and methods. But as well as, but they also can um, extend them, so override them or implement more methods. So a bicycle is a vehicle, uh, but it's different from a car, and it's different from a ferry, and it's different from a plane. Why? Because the bicycle goes on the bicycle path, for for instance, the car is just goes on the road, while ferry is on water, and the plane on air. That just one of the uh, of their difference of course the plane has wings uh, while the bicycles has an handlebar instead of the driving wheel so uh, we could uh, define a different uh, kind of attributes and methods for these classes for now i'm just going to show you a basic example and um, Simply output a message. So let's first uh, define a um, an attribute here. This attribute is going to be shared between all uh, the subclasses, so it's going to be always the same unless we change it, like we did before when we uh, created this uh, person class. So this is shared every time we instantiate an object. The attribute that we uh, define here uh, are shared. Instead, when we define um, a, a constructor, um, these attributes are unique every time we instantiate a new class object. So let's uh, define one here. So it goes on. And for now, we are going to leave it empty. And let's uh, define a documentation block so here uh, as uh, we, I will show you that in a moment I use these double hashtags uh, because the text size is going to be different so the uh, if you know about uh, a bit more, a little bit about website development, you know that uh, H1 is the big title text, so this is going to be one hashtag, H2 is going to be two hashtags, and H3, which is the smaller title text, is going to be three hashtags. So I am going to use the two hashtags because I don't want the text to be really huge. Um, and let's define here a constructor and then um, let's get rid of that and then in here we will pass to uh, so let's say color and then power so two attributes here um, so the parameters that we are passing to uh, the um, class constructor will be the attributes that we will instantiate and these are going to be unique. So let's define them. So every vehicle has a color and every vehicle has a power, so a bicycle has muscle powers uh, and then a car could be electric but also the bicycle uh, and the car could be petrol or electric anyway and ferry petrol probably uh, could be electric probably in the future and also for the vehicle for the airplane so let's say plane not plane, sorry about that. So it's power 
and like that. Okay. If we want, we can add the documentation block also here. We can say that's clear that this is a constructor, but anyway, if um, an entry level developer is going to read our code that is not really familiar with uh, Python syntax, that's going to help him understand what this code does. Maybe it comes from another language and he knows that this is a constructor. So because the constructor and classes uh, are um, common in most programming language. So let's say that now we want to define a message. So let's say the And in here, uh, let's say a message is equal to a string, uh, and then say Okay, now let's use the format method and in here I'm going to use a so self I want to use the class and then the name That should give me the name of the class that I'm using. Uh, I want this to be uppercase. And then uh, let's say self. And then self power and then self uh, goes on. Okay, that's our message let's return it okay now let's say that we don't want to override anything inside this for now it's fine but we are going to of course uh, change this when we create a class we could Instead of doing that, we could pass this to the constructor anyway, but that's fine as well. So let's see uh, what we can do. Um, let's first document our code. I got the blocks in here, so let me just copy that so you don't have to watch me typing. Remember that the um, indentation is important inside of a class like it's, it is inside functions and methods so make sure you use the same amount of spaces or tabs I use tabs in this case okay it doesn't matter if you use tabs or uh, um, spaces but sometimes it's better to use spaces like when you use one of the um, distribution um, editors like nano if you are using linux it's easier to format your code using spaces than tabs because otherwise the uh, tabs will move the code if it's quite long uh, just too much to the right and you will have to scroll to the right and it's not that easy uh, as it is with the IDE so I prefer to use um, tabs when I'm working inside the IDE editor uh, but not when I'm using for instance nano uh, let's uh, so we defined the classes and we added the documentation blocks 
and let's now instantiate them so we have bicycle and it's going to be equal to the bicycle class and you see here we pass this information to the bicycle class we got the class constructor here uh, because this is inherited from the uh, vehicle class so that's what we are seeing now if we want it to be smaller we can do that and when we see it so when we over the name of the class we will see the message that uh, we defined inside the main class so you see it's very big because I used, if I'm not wrong, a two. Yeah, two. Let's put it down to three, which is more readable and less huge. Okay, so here you see the, the main uh, description of the class, so the title in this case. If we want to add more information, we can do that by uh, uh, going on the next line and writing uh, some uh, other information here. So, um, I don't know. Uh, you see, this is normal standard text. Uh, why this is going to be the title of the class, or the main description, uh, is going to be this one. Right, so we could do that, for instance, let's, let's copy that in here and let's just say bicycle subclass that makes more sense. So you see bicycle subclass is that's the title and then we have this um, description. If we had more if we add more information to the class, so we want, if we pass parameters, attributes, or have methods, so we can provide more information here at the top. Okay, let's instantiate that. So this bicycle is going to be electric. And let's say that we want to change the codes on and not like that and say uh, cycle. Path. So the bicycle goes on cycle paths. And let's now call print this message. So let's call the uh, message method if I'm not wrong. So message, yes. So the message method doesn't have any description, yes. So you don't see anything, but if you want, as we said before, so so that's just a random message um, and a random description anyway, but you see it's appearing here inside the IDE. Um, window and then let's see what it does let's print the code we have a, an help to get rid of so let's get rid of that and let's quit and so we have this message now so bicycle color black so that's the name of the class that we converted into capital letters like using the upper method and using the class and the name special attributes we got the name of the class uh, we are in and then we output this message so uh, color black power let goes on cycle paths and let's we can do the same for all the other class but um, to keep the video short uh, we just copy some code that I already have so we can quickly see the output 
Can we see the output? We don't know. We got a message. Uh, yeah, we got an error because this is called message. No overview. Okay. Let's run again. So we've got all the four subclasses that we defined, and each subclass has, of course, a different message and different. Uh, attributes so this one has color black this one is color red and the ferry is white and is powered by electric uh, power source and then uh, it goes on water while the plane of course goes on air and you know, also the plane is electric it's futuristic plane so, um, so in the example up here uh, we uh, defined a class vehicle class using the syntax that we already know, we are familiar with. Uh, then we defined four uh, subclasses, so four child classes. And as you see here, um, where is here? To define a subclass, we use the class keyword as always, followed by the name of our subclass and a pair of parentheses and between the parentheses we specify the name of the class uh, we want inherits from uh, so a class can also inherit from uh, multiple classes so one class can have multiple parent classes so each subclass that we define here has access to the parent classes uh, parent class attributes and methods and in our example the attributes defined inside the constructor so these attributes color and power this is not an attribute this is a special keyword so these two uh, are unique so for each class object instance uh, while this one the goes on attribute is shared between classes unless we override it so if we don't use if we do if we remove this you will see that our message changes so this is going to be for each of them an empty string let's try it so let's print our code okay you see that goes on for all of them is empty because we didn't pass anything so this as i say this is an attribute which is shared between classes so let's see uh, first now how to override parents methods and attributes so attributes we already saw them but let's dig a bit more into it So let's grab again. Where is the plane? Let's grab this one. Down here. Okay. So the plane um, subclass uh, can override its uh, parents attribute. So let's say so the parents attribute goes on is empty. At the moment so we can say sky and then we can write the message method and let's say we want a different message uh, random one like Okay. Okay, in this way we have a different uh, method implementation, but the method is always the same. So the same name. So we over we are overriding uh, this one. So the parent class method msg message, uh, which was this one, and now we are simply rewriting the this method 
inside the subclass, so inside the child class, and uh, changing its content with a different implementation. So um, let's instantiate this class. So again, another futuristic airplane, and then we want to print the message. Let's see what we got. So here, that was the previous um, example here. So the previous instantiation of this class object. And then we have the last one. So the message now is different. Airplanes fly uh, in the sky, while before it was plain, color white, power electric goes on and empty because we uh, deleted this line of code. Uh, so in your uh, child in your child class uh, if your child class needs to override uh, one of the parent method um, to behave in a different way it can do so by redefining the parent method and the same way is true for the shared attributes like the goes on uh, that we just used here uh, let's see now uh, another thing that we can do so we said before that one class can one subclass can have many parents class so so one class can inherit from multiple classes uh, so as we said earlier we can do that and let's see how we can do it so let's get started by defining four classes Okay. All right, let's say that the human subclass inherits from all these three um, parent classes. So let's say that um, let's first implement this um, classes. So let's say first that this is defined a boy. And we have a method. So what the boy does is play. So boy plays hard. And let's say another documentation block and say message. We play hard and we return message. Okay, so when you are young, you play hard. When you are an adult, so let's um, what we do, we work. And let's say another. Documentation block. We work harder. And then, where is the other one? Old man. Old man rest. So, let's copy that so I don't have to write that again. 
So the old man does gardening. <laughs> As well, let's say that the old man rest and uh, another message. Well, we can say we rest and enjoy our garden and then we return the message. Okay, so we have four, uh, three different methods inside each of these classes. Let's get rid of some spaces. Uh, we don't have to scroll much. Uh, okay, let's now Define a human. So human uh, inherits from all of these classes. So human is first boy, then it's an adult, and then it's an old man. So makes sense that human inherits from all of them. So boy, then inside the parentheses to to of course as you are probably understanding um, by now we use a comma to def to define multiple parent classes so let's say adult and then old man and then we pass so we don't implement these classes this class for now we simply inherit whatever is inside these parent classes so let's instantiate a human Uh, we are we did not document this class so there's nothing to see actually the first thing that we see is defines a boy uh, probably because he's getting it from this so let's say that we change it like so and we should see defines human okay uh, so we have instantiated the human object and then we print a message uh, using its three uh, methods. So let's say that so in here is going to it's going to be the content of the boy message. So boy play. And then uh, we have, then we grow. And again here, the output of the work method is going to replace this placeholder for the second part of the message and then finally we get holder so and in here the message of the other one and then use the format method and as the parameters now i'm going to pass the methods for each of these uh, parents classes so the methods that the uh, child class has inherited from its parents so the first thing is going to be the boy message uh, so human and then we have play and then again a human and we have work and parentheses and then again human object and then we have rest okay so as you will see in a second we are going to call these three methods and replace this oh, this um, placeholder thanks to the format method and let's run the code and sure enough we have this message we when we are young we play hard then we grow out and we work harder finally we get older and so we rest and enjoy our garden so that's 
practically how you inherit from multiple classes and in your program depending what your program does it might be useful to have one child class that grabs methods and attributes from different classes uh, so that's uh, that's how you uh, can do it and uh, so let's recap in this example up here we created three classes and one subclass so the human is a subclass the subclass inherits from all the classes that we define up here so old man added and boy so inherits from all of them and um, and uh, each of the um, parent classes sorry and each of the parent classes are separated by a comma inside the parentheses of the subclass and so we can instantiate it so the subclass we can instantiate it and use all the methods that are defined inside its parents and that's pretty much it uh, so let's move to another concept uh, concept which is uh, how to use the super function there is another function that is useful uh, in object-oriented programming when we talk about classes and subclasses so this function is useful to watch as a method inherited from parent classes that have been overridden in a child class uh, in the next example we are um, going to override inside the human class the rest method then we define another method using the super uh, function and we are going to call the original uh, rest method so we will see the difference uh, this will allow us to watch as either uh, method so the original one so the original message and the new message that we passed to the overwritten uh, method uh, inside the class so let's see it in action so let's grab it from here uh, let's okay uh, so let's copy that and get rid of the pass keyword and let's say we want to override the rest so the rest method is from the ottoman um, parent class and we are going to override it like that as you know uh, com an equal sign and then uh, we need to pass a message time to rest and return it okay so this is the new method that we are going to get when we instantiate the human um, object and uh, we call this rest method and let's define another method up here that is going to output the original message uh, from the parent class so let's say define old message and say self and uh, so as we say the super function um, lets us access the original content of a method uh, from the parent class in this case uh, so let's say return super and then dot what do we have here what do we have it no but it works like that so rest turn okay that's why we didn't find it return okay now let's instantiate this class and what we get human you is going to be human 
and then now we want to print the first method so human to we have the you see we got all the methods that we have from the um, parent classes so play rest and work so let's print the rest method that we actually uh, over it in here but we also have the new method that we defined so a human to and it's going to have uh, this old message so now you will see two messages and as you see the first message is going to be this one and uh, which is the original method of the old man um, parent class that we have overridden and then we have and so it's different and then in here using the old message uh, method we printed the original uh, content of the old man um, class using the sub super function and as you see we got this message we rest and enjoy our garden so um, that's pretty much it uh, about the inheritance there is of course as always uh, a lot of um, things to learn but now it's time to rest <laughs> Um, so uh, there is a lot of to learn and I suggest you to visit the documentation for further details and further reference. Uh, I will leave the, the links to the description of the arguments that we covered inside the, the video description. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.